have some rain showers here in uh, South Dakota off to the uh, harbor side. Uh, quite a few of them, but um, widely scattered. And what we're doing now is uh, working with the radar a little bit. Understand uh, if we could navigate around these in the event we could see them, which is a huge advantage for folks new to radar. Here's what we're looking at. And uh, we've tilted the, r the radar such that we can see it clearly. And I, I don't want to say tilt's not important, but it's only as important the radar as a flashlight is to a dark trail. Um, you just tilt it to you can see what you want to see. And the question becomes, what do you want to see? Well, of course, we want to see water. And the good news is, is that's all that radar paints. If you go to the vertical profile on this center phenomenon here, we can see asymmetry in the paint. That is, there's some tallness here, and the rest of the thing is symmetrical about the center of the cone. And that, indeed, is a rain shower. Now, it's uh, light to moderate, according to the radar. Remember that radar in requires uh, resolution as it gets closer, just like a flashlight does, as opposed to an X-Rad, which is 2,000 meter resolution, no matter how close you zoom in on, on that. So a huge difference. A turn further right. As we do, uh, the radar is going to show less water in that column, and that's because we're painting now the edge of it. Now here's another one over here. Go back to the horizontal mode, we'll be able to see. You can see if you, you know, uh, even if you couldn't see, if there's no lightning, it's uh, safe to maneuver through these these columns of water. The, the advantage of training this equipment is that now we can see and we can corroborate what we know to be true with our Mark 1 eyeballs with what the radar is telling us. And uh, that's pretty important. So with a few sessions like this, you can gain some confidence that what you see on the radar is indeed um, not lying to you, and you can use this equipment to na navigate through rain showers. Lightning is a different story, so make sure you have storm scope on, and make sure it's in a mode that, uh, uh, in the strike mode, as opposed to uh, the cell mode, so that you get raw data that gives you information about lightning in the vicinity. These are decayed strikes, but we got very little activity. Strike rate is now zero, um, but when you first turn it on, it's probably wise to clear, particularly after a turn. Uh, clear what you got, although this is geosynchronous. Uh, we got uh, little plus signs and large plus signs. There are four uh, rates of degradation. These are older and are not of concern of ours. We will want to stay 25 to 30 miles away from lightning. As you may know, spherics, which is what storm scope is, uh, may cause some radial spread but, uh, so that software tries to smooth that. A smoothing is most smooth in the, uh, in the cell mode, but strike mode is what we want because we don't want too much smoothing. There's a brand new strike right there. One from over in this direction somewhere. 25, about 20 miles away, so BVR, beyond visual range for now. This other cell here, this other rain shot. So in the G1000, in the, in the PA46, this tool is amazing. It's a color weather radar with vertical profile. It's how you know you're looking at water as opposed to terrain. And then uh, comparing that or corroborating that with NEXRAD, can give a, a really good picture, add to that data link lightning and storm scope to tell you about what areas to stay completely away from. And you have some tools that'll allow you to navigate and safely 
uh, fly through areas of uh, less than ideal weather. This is Dick Rochford. I safely train often.